So with the final preparations for most of the players done at the Rome Open, we have some massive changes to the rankings and also the seedings locked in for the French Open coming up next week. Let's go over and see who won last week because it might surprise you who actually won Rome. So starting on the WTA, Alina Rabakina gets her first big clay court trophy, taking out Kalanina in the final 6-4 one love retirement. Unfortunately, Kalanina could not continue her amazing run. And Rabakina got a nice boost in the rankings from it. And on the men's side, Daniel Medvedev takes out Holger Runa 7-5-7-5 to lift the biggest trophy of his clay court career and also get a massive boost in the ranks, which is going to be telling at the French Open. So, so two unlikely winners in Rabak and Remedev winning on a slow clay court in Rome this week. Let's go have a look at some of the players that have gone up in the rankings this week that are outside the top 10. With Kalanina going up to a career high number 25 in the world, 22 spots higher than last week after making the biggest final of her career so far. And that guarantees her a seed at the French Open. So it was a great week for her. Also, Paola Bedosa going up to number 29 in the world, six spots higher than last week after making the quarterfinals of Rome. Again, getting her in the seedings for the French Open next week. And Ugo Ambert, he goes up to number 38 in the world, 12 spots higher than last week after winning a challenger event that was worth 175 points. So he's getting really close to being seeded. And if a couple of people withdraw, he might actually get a seed after winning a challenger. So three players there that got a real valuable boost this week. And players that went down outside the top 10, Bianca Andreescu. She's gone down 10 spots, number 41 in the world after failing to defend the points from last year. So that means she won't be seeded at the French Open, whereas before Rome, she would have been. Also, Anissa Mova going down 28 spots, number 89 in the world after not playing this week. But she's also not going to be playing in the near future. So it doesn't really matter too much for the French Open coming up where she's ranked. And over on the ATP, Alexander Zverev, he's dropped down five spots to number 27 in the world after dropping points from last year's Rome Open. And he's in a really tricky spot because now he is vulnerable when the draw comes out of maybe playing Alcaraz or Djokovic potentially in a third round. So it's going to be a real tough draw for Zverev coming up at the French. But a couple of players there that couldn't defend the points from last year have dropped down the ranks. Let's have a look at the WTA rankings for this week. And no change up the top with Fiontech staying at number one, Sabalenka at number two, but that gap is closing very quickly and at the French Open things are going to start to look really interesting. Pagula still at number three but Rabakina by winning Rome she goes up two spots to number four in the world a career high for her and will now avoid Sviantec and Sabalenka until the semi-finals so a huge boost in the rankings for her pushing Garcia down to number five and Goff down to number six. Jabir still at seven, Zachary at eight, Kazakina at nine and Kvitova still hanging on to that top ten spot for now. Looking at the race of the finals now for the ladies and no change up the top with Sabalenka staying at one and Rabakina adding a thousand points Still at number two, but not too far behind now. Fiontech at three, Pagula at four, Benchic at five, Rajikova still at six, Kvitova at seven, but Kudamatova. She goes up five spots into that top eight after a nice semi-final run in Rome this week. So back-to-back -back semi-finals of big tournaments, giving her a boost, pushing Goff down to number nine. Ostapenko also got a boost, making the semi-finals of Rome up to number 10, which is five spots higher than last week, pushing both Zachary and Azarenka out completely from the top 10. So a few players there that have all but guaranteed their spot at the year-end finals before the semi second Grand Slam of the year has even begun. Let's go over the men's rankings now, and we have a change at the top. Carlos Alcaraz is number one in the world again, after Djokovic failed to defend the points from Rome last year. But Daniel Medvedev, he has also jumped up the rankings to number two. So Djokovic going from number one to number three in the span of a week due to the Rome loss that he took in the quarterfinals. So big changes to the rankings ahead of the French Open with Kasparud still at number four. So that top four seeds, it's going to be very interesting to see when the draw comes out because of course Djokovic being number three could draw or Alcaraz in the semi-finals of the French. So the draw is going to be crucial for all those guys. Sidibas stays at number five. And we've got Runa going up one spot to number six. Career high for him, pushing down Rublev to number seven. After, of course, Runa making the final of Rome. Sinner stays at eight. Fritz at nine. And Ogelli has seen rounds at the top 10 for this week. So some huge changes to the rankings again this week. Over to the ATP finals race now. And things are starting to take some big shape over there too. With Medvedev going up to the top spot, pushing Alcaraz down to number two after winning another trophy. He's now won five tournaments this year and adding a thousand points thanks to winning Rome. Alcaraz didn't have a great tournament in Rome. He goes down to number two with Djokovic staying at number three. Sidibas at four. Sinner at five. Rublev at six. But Runa, after having a decent run to the Rome final, he goes up two spots to number seven, pushing Fritz down to number eight. Hashinov goes down to number nine. Tommy Paul falls out of the top 10 completely, making way for Cam Norrie, who goes back into the top 10. So some massive changes for the race of the finals as well. And Daniel Medvedev is now creating a big gap between him and Alcaraz for one and two in the race of the finals. So there you have it. So much to talk about with the rankings. And of course, with the French Open coming up, it is so crucial. It was, it was so crucial for so many of those guys and girls to have a good run this week. And the ones that did have a good run, Medvedev, 
Rabakina, not only did they get trophies, but they also got rewarded in the rankings. And hopefully the draw plays out for them in their favor because, of course, the draw comes out on Thursday. Make sure you join us. We're doing the live draw preview show or the draw ceremony show. So make sure you join us for that on Thursday. But, man, the French Open draw is going to look so interesting now. There's so many different things that could happen. But let me know down in the comments below. What's the biggest shock for you this week in the rankings? Is it the Medvedev's number two in the world? Remember three months ago, Medvedev, or even four months ago, Medvedev was, like, out of the top ten. He looked terrible. And now he's in the number two spot again and playing for the number one spot when we get to the French Open. But they're the rankings for this week. Crazy changes all around.